Hello everyone. In the last session, we discussed about the completely state R winding. State R winding and how the state R winding is formed. What are the different types of state R windings and what is the importance and the new terms coil and turns, conductors, the relation between the turns, coil and conductors, all those things. From this, we should collect some important points from that that should be we should discuss in this session here if two consecutive sections of windings is allowed to carry the current in opposite direction then there will be fold formation between them what is this meaning means consecutive sections means so we have one section and and we have the another section here this section is current is exiting outside this section is current is inside then there will be a fold formation then there will be fold formation this section this section current should be in opposite direction this current should be in opposite direction then there will be a fold formation yes yeah and next what is the next point if two consecutive sections of a coil is allowed to carry the current in the same direction in the first point there is a opposite direction but if it is in same direction then will not be any fold formation between them so look at here so again we have two sections two sessions one is the north and another one is this session we have two sessions is like this here current is insidely going again the current is insidely going but there is no pole there is no pole formation there is no pole formation understand there is no pole formation actually when the opposite side is different currents then the pole formation is possible if the two currents are same direction currents are entering otherwise we can name it the another thing so we have two sections that is dot both are exiting both are currents are upward then there is also no pole formation there is no pole so in order to form a pole it must and should be there is a different current directions coil should have the different current directions next if an induction motor contains p number of poles per phase so for phase it consisting of the p poles then the induction machine is considered as the p pole machine then the machine is considered as the p pole machines so we have phase generally poles per phase is called as the p pole machine simply the state are winding are distributed as well as short pitch generally we have the state are winding types we discussed state are winding is two types so that already discussed state are winding is classification is two types of classification the first classification is the concentric winding that means all conductors are same position and second is distributed winding that means the mmf will be distributed equally and this is the first classification what is the another classification another is the pull pitch winding and in that second is the short pitch winding generally from this all these things what is the preferred means the preferred is always the state are winding from the all the points the preferred winding is like this that is that is the winding should be concentric and short pitch winding that should be the short pitch winding so it should not concentric sorry sorry not concentric it is must and should be the distributed distributed winding that means mmf is must and should be distributed equally mmf mmf is must and should distributed equally and must and should be short pitch winding so by using this winding what is the advantage by using this winding 
the advantage is it reduces the harmonics the main importance is main reason is so the harmonics induced that will reduce the harmonics what is the harmonics you know that harmonics are nothing but unwanted frequencies unwanted frequencies that can be reduced here next and as well as to save the copper the another factor is also there one is reduce the harmonics the other important factor is to save copper the copper will be saved how copper will be saved for pull fitch winding the complete copper is used but for short fitch the copper length will be decreased next we can change poles by end to end connections direction of opposite poles is formed otherwise no pole formation so we can vary the we can change the poles by the connections end end connections and direction opposite the poles is formed otherwise no pole formation direction should be opposite otherwise no no pole for direction should be opposite means coil should have one coil is entering and another coil must and should be leaving then the coil is working otherwise it is not working so these are the some important points are much useful to design the state or winding useful to design the state or winding okay and in the state or winding we discussed about lot of points here those are state or state or uh, construction and in that construction we discussed about the all the points and with also state important state or winding also next we will entering into the rotor construction the rotor construction rotor you know that that is the rotating area the rotating part that is the that will rotates only okay here there are two types of rotors are available the first rotor is the squirrel gauge or cage rotor squirrel gauge or cage rotor it's look like a squirrel it's like a squirrel gauge generally that is called as the rotor the the combination of squirrel gauge rotor addition with the stator then then the induction motor is become squirrel gauge induction motor squirrel gauge induction motor so this is the one type one type and we have the another rotor that is the slip ring rotor by phi adding for the slip ring rotor addition with the stator then the induction motor become srim srim means the slip ring induction motor slip ring induction motor so depends on the rotor construction only the induction motors is divided into two types so finally the induction motors are not motors induction machines are two types rotors one is the first is squirrel gauge induction motor and second one is slip ring induction motor squirrel gauge induction motor have the particular applications in that particular area the squirrel gauge is preferred and slip ring induction motor also having some particular applications in that area we are using the slip ring induction motor so compare with these two it look like a squirrel gauge it look like a squirrel gauge it look like looks like squirrel squirrel gauge cage so that's why name itself it is called as the squirrel gauge induction motor here slip rings are very much important role slip rings are involved in the construction involved in the construction that's why it is called as the slip ring induction motor it is called as the slip ring induction motor so by studying this squirrel gauge induction motor and the slip ring induction motor we can clear idea about the the total 
total structure of the squirrel gauge induction motor and the slip ring induction motor okay so for we should discuss about squirrel gauge induction motor construction and slip ring induction motor construction separately okay so this is about the some important points regarding the regarding the stator winding construction and the types of the rotas okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you